This time, we're taking a look on how we can use the OPC together with the Pocket Operator Modular Systems. The OPC can be used with the OpLab module that gives you these four outputs. It gives you a CV pitch plus a CV2 that we'll talk more about in a second. We get a gate signal plus a CV3, also we'll talk about that. We get an in signal for syncing the OPC with either MIDI or by trigger. We also get a sync out, which we can use with either MIDI, trigger or pocket operator clock. So, we're not going to focus on the syncing in to the OPC. We will use the OPC as the master to control the pocket operator modulars. Okay, let's get going. Uh, we got a simple patch up here, a saw wave going into a filter, going into a VCA, to your speaker out. And we have an envelope that triggers both the filter and the VCA. Simple stuff. We don't hear anything because nothing is triggering the envelope right now. And nothing is giving the pitch to the saw wave. So we will give it to them by using the OPC. To connect the OPC, we could use either regular cables, like this one. But this only gives us one signal. Remember I said that you could get both CV pitch and CV2 out of this one? A regular cable like this will only give you the CV pitch, not the CV2. So, to get the CV2 you need some sort of split cables, and luckily Teenage Engineering just happens to make those. They look a little something like this. This one goes into the OPC, and you get two that comes out. You get a little chip signal that gives you the CV pitch signal and the ring signal that gives you the CV2. I will show you why this is fun to have. We'll connect to the first one. We want CV to our saw wave. Take the split cable, connect the tip to the key in. That will give the saw its pitch signal. Okay. Uh, then we will use another split cable connected to the gate. We get gate on the tip and CV3 on the ring. So we'll get the gate going to the envelope. So if we have this set up correctly, which I actually freaking bet it is, I should be able to play this now. It's not. Why isn't it? Why isn't it sounding? Why don't I get a sound? Yeah, that's right, because I haven't selected the right track. You have to go to the module track over here. You see, I have already programmed a sequence here, spoiler alert, but now if I play this... I can play the synth. This is awesome. All these sounds come from the 400. Let's press play and see what happens. Yep, that's pretty funky. Now we have the OPC controlling the Pocket Operator Modular 400. Cool stuff. But what about all these CV2s and CV3s that I was talking about? Let's connect. This is the CV2 that we can get out of the, uh, the first jack here. Let's connect that to the filter modulation. Turn that up a bit. The CV2 is basically this knob, the green knob, and the CV3 is the blue knob, okay? So, if I turn this down, I should be able to control this filter cutoff right now. You hear it? It's almost nothing there. So increase it and decrease it, it disappears. And increase, it gets back. Well, that's cool. You don't have to, you know, reach over here and do 
do this. That's cool, you can control this. If, if you have a, a very complex patch, this could be really handy. But the really cool stuff is that you can parameter lock this. So let's just hold record and spin this a little bit. I'm holding record here, having it play. And we have recorded our own motion into the sequence of this filter knob. How cool is that, okay? Are you hyped? I am hyped. And you can adjust this. And we got another one. What are we gonna do with this one? Maybe we can put it into... Hmm... Let's put it... Let's go crazy. Let's put it into the control one. Turn it up, please. You're gonna hear a little change. Now I can control the pitch of this oscillator over here. Pretty cool, huh? So, this could be very handy for both experimentation and useful for other things. We're gonna check it out in another example. Okay, let's go there. Here we have a modification of the patch that I just did. The OPC is not controlling anything at the moment. We'll change that in a second, don't you worry. I modulated the patch a little bit. We have a sine wave going into the frequency modulation of the saw, making it a little more crazy. We have a sequence from the sequencer going up to the saw and triggering the envelope. So, let's hear it. Pretty cool. So, if I want to sync this with the OPC, uh, I'm going to use a cable, a regular cable, not a splitter cable right now, to the fourth jack. This is the out jack, sync out. So I'm going to, it's set to sync for pocket operator clock. Let's see how it sounds now. I'm just going to turn it up. You hear it's quiet now, it's waiting for, the, the sequence is not running since the OPC is not running. So now the OPC is in charge. And the OPC has a lot slower tempo, so we get a lot more groove, heavy groove, going on over here, okay? This is sweet, but it gets a little boring after a while, don't you think? I like this melody, but I want it to change, maybe, maybe give it a texture of chords, a change of following chord progression, make it more into, turn it more into a song, that's pretty much the hardest thing you can do in modular to make it follow a chord progression. But with the op lab and the OPC, it's easy. Let's stop this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use the mixer. Previously we've just used the mixer as an audio mixer, but it could just as well mix CV signals. So let's hook up, I have a split cable going into this, that gives us CV pitch and CV2. Gonna take the CV pitch and put it in here. I'm gonna change so I get the signal from the sequencer, the CV. We'll go into two over here. So now we have the signal from the sequencer in on channel two, and we have the CV pitch from the OPC into number three on the mixer. Now we just need to connect the mixer to the saw. So this is now collecting both CV sources, mixing them together and sending it to the saw. If we do this. Let's hit play and see what happens. Here it's changed because the OPC is now connected. But 
if I press another key here, you hear that it changes. To make it even more apparent, I can turn down this FM sequencing. Now I can sequence the OPC so I can change the PUM400's melody. I can transpose it into various numbers. Let's turn on the FM because I like FM, okay? It gives a little craziness going, okay? So let's do this. Uh, I'm gonna record, uh, I think, on first step, I want it to be a G. And we're just gonna do something basic. We do G to D to, to G again. Let's do C, something like that. Cool, huh? If you have a keen ear, you might notice that when I stop the OPC, the sequence goes back to start, but the PUM400 sequence will just pick up where it stopped. So, let's try and demonstrate this. Okay, so it's just going to do do and if it reset itself, it should be do 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 pretty much instantly, but... It doesn't. The OPC resets itself, the 400 doesn't. How can we change this? We have a little reset input here on the sequencer. We're gonna use it. Uh, how are we gonna use it? You could use it with like a trigger, a clock signal, uh, and that could work perfectly, but now I wanna be 100% certain that it will reset on every chord change, okay? On our progression. So I'm gonna use the CV2 on the from the split cable that goes out here. I'm gonna put that into the reset. Remember the CV2 sends the control of this knob and the reset expects a trigger, like a short pulse to happen for it to reset. And this is like a, a wheel, just a motion. But since we can parameter lock this, I can select the step I want to parameter lock, in this case the first one, and hold that down, and turn this all the way up, do the same for the other three, right now it's going to be like max on this, no, 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 max, no, 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 max, no, 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 max, no, 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 in fact you're making like a tick, tick, trigger. Cool, huh? Let's see if it works. Now it triggers perfectly. Super cool, super useful. And now we have this sync going on. We could add a beat to it. Why not? Let's do that. Pretty cool, huh? Experiment, see what you can come up with, develop this further, put this into your patches and have fun, okay? <laughs> 